Good evening, I'm Brother Chris Honeycutt. I'm the pastor of Fellowship Baptist Church, and I'd like to welcome each and every one of you coming and, and joining us for our Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, we're going to have a brief devotion tonight that I want to share with you, and uh, after that, I've got a special announcement that I want to share with you about our church, so I hope you can stay tuned. Uh, we're going to have a special announcement that I want to share and go over a few things with you, so I uh, just want to let you know that uh, as far as I know, uh, talking to people, everybody's still doing well. And we want to continue to pray for each other and pray for our church and pray that the Lord's will be done. Pray for wisdom and discernment as we continue to go forward. And uh, just pray that the Lord's will be done in everything that we do. And we're just uh, we're looking forward to what God has in store for our church. But I wanted to just share a brief passage with you tonight. And after that, I, like I said, I've got an announcement I'd like to share with you. And I, I was looking up a passage in the book of Ecclesiastes, and I looked in chapter 12. But actually, I want to back up just to chapter 11 just a little bit and read a few verses, then get into chapter 12. And I'm going to read this tonight, and then I'm going to make a few comments uh, in this passage of Scripture. Uh, one of the things that I, I'm going to talk about in this passage of Scripture, I think that we as a church like to express a lot, is that we always say the saying, we want to get them while they're young. I know that uh, many of you who are church members of our church, we talk about that a lot, is that we want to ingrain our young people with the Word of God. We want to teach them. We want to bring them up in the Word of God because uh, I believe when a, when a child grows up learning God's Word and being taught God's Word and they accept God's Word early, in an early age, is that it's much harder for them to discount that later on in their lives. So uh, I think that's going to apply some to what we're going to see here in this passage of Scripture. So I'm going to read Ecclesiastes 11, 9, and 10. And then I'm going to go into, verse, into chapter 12, verse 1. And this is what it says. It says, Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou, that thou wilt these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart, and put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. So just a second, you want to see these, these passages of, of Scripture. He's saying, rejoice in your youth. I don't think there's nothing wrong with enjoying being a young person. Rejoice in your youth. Uh, let your heart be a cheer for the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of thine heart. Seek what is it that you're desiring as a young person. What do you want to do? Follow uh, the things you want to do. But he makes a warning and a disclaimer with that, that while we are searching the desires of our heart as a young person, we need to be ever so mindful of God and his commandments. But know thou that for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. Enjoy being a young person. Enjoy your life. But remember, don't enjoy it too much because God is going to pass judgment if we take advantage of the things that we have as a youth. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh. Take away the evil things. And I think that there's none better time than when you're a young person is to seek God, put away the things that are displeasing to God and follow him. It goes on in chapter 12. It says, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth. Remember God. And I, if I had a message to tell all of our uh, graduates that have just graduated from high school and those that are about to be seniors, remember now your Creator. Remember thy Creator in the days of thy youth. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. So right now is the time in your life where you need to put your focus on God. And I think it's very important for young people to acknowledge that, is that the idea is, oh, I'll just live life to the fullest, and then I'll get things right with God as I get older. But we know that can't, that's not always the case. And some people don't ever get to that point. And I want us to see here in this scripture that young people need to focus on God while they're still young and not to wait for God, not to wait to do things for God later, but to do things for God now. 
It goes on and it says, uh, while the sun, while the light, nor the moon, or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. It means basically, do it now. Follow God now. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few and those that look out of the windows be darkened and the doors shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low and he shall rise up the voice of his bird and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. And then John is talking, you're going to see this is some of God's judgment. Also when they shall be afraid that which is high and fear shall be in the way and the almond tree shall full of flourish and the grasshopper shall be a burden and the desire shall fail because man goeth to his long home and the mourners go about the streets or ever the silver cord be loosed or the golden bowl be broken or the pitcher be broken at the fountain or the wheel broken at the cistern then shall the dust return to the earth as it was remember we as men, men and women are created from the dust of the earth and all the things that we do no matter what, we're going to return back to the dust of the earth. So then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. So we got all these things that are going on. People in our youth are doing all these things. We need to be mindful of God and what, who he is and what he's done for us. And then we can be so preoccupied and enjoying our lives and doing so many other things that we forget that God is going to judge us one day. And we are going to return back to the dust of the earth. We're going to die. We're going to have to pass that, that, that plane of, of we live our lives and then we die. And then our spirit will return back to God. We will have to stand before God and he will pass judgment. And it goes on, it says, Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher, all is vanity and moreover because the preacher was wise he still taught the people knowledge yea he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs the preacher sought forth to find out acceptable words and that which was written upright even words of truth the words of the wise are as goads and the nails fastened by the masters of assemblies which are given from one shepherd now uh if you know anything about uh you remember when Paul was knocked off of his uh, uh, his donkey when he was going to Damascus, and uh, Jesus says, "Why are you why are you persecuting me?" And, it's, and Paul says, "How am I not? How, don't, how am I persecuting you?" He says, "When he says you, it's hard for you to uh, to prick against the goads." So you see the word goads there. I believe that wisdom here, the word of wise are as goads and as nails fastened by the master of assemblies. It's something that's sure. It's something that sh it is, uh, it's, it's, it's showing us. It's pricking us. It's, it's, it's revealing itself to us. It's fastened by the masters of assemblies. It's well done, which are given from what? One shepherd. We have the shepherd, our shepherd, Jesus Christ. We have wisdom that comes from Christ. And further by these, my son, be admonished, for making many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What is the conclusion of talking to young people, enjoy their lives, but be careful how they live their lives, and all the things that go on, we're going to return back to the dust of the earth, our spirit's going to return back to God, uh, we're going to have to acknowledge wisdom from the shepherd. But here's the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. We are to fear God at all times and to do what he tells us to do. This is the whole duty of man. This is the complete work of man, that we fear God and do his commandments. And that is pretty simple when you think about it. For what reason? For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So we see from this passage of Scripture, he's going to judge us. We need to, in our youth, acknowledge God. We need to acknowledge God now. We need to realize that the things that we do in this life really won't matter much in eternity except when it pertains to the things of God. And remember to look to wisdom, and that wisdom comes from Christ because there's coming a day where God will judge us 
according to what we've done. I wanted to share those few verses with you tonight. And I want to close us in a word of prayer. And then after I have a word of prayer, I'm going to share an announcement with you. And I hope that you can stay tuned for that. So let me, let me close you in a word of prayer. Then I have an announcement. <clears throat> Father, just want to come to you in prayer. Thank you so much for this time that we can look at your word for a few moments. And Lord, I pray that you bless the reading of your word, that you would just be lifted up. And Lord, I pray during this time, Lord, that you would be lifted up as well, that you would get all the glory. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I wanted to share just a few things with you for a few minutes. Uh, our leadership had met uh, just previously, uh, just the other day, and we are talking about the opening up of our church services again. And we've had a few people ask, and I said, well, well, we'll get together and we'll talk about that. and We'll determine what is best for our church. Well, we finally met, and as we discussed, we feel like it's time when we can start opening up our church again. But uh, there's a few things that we're going to do a little differently, and we're going to start out a little bit slow. Uh, but we are going to continue to get things kind of going again because I, I believe it's about time for us to get back into a physical location and to worship together. Howbeit, I've got a letter here that I'm going to be sharing here in just a few minutes online. It's going to be uh, posted on the website. It's going to be on Facebook. I'm going to be sending some letters out for those of, that don't have internet capabilities to get things on, online. And I'll be doing a prayer gram and sharing information on that. And I'll be making phone calls. So I want to be giving you information here in the next few minutes of some things that we're going to be doing so I want to go over that just for a minute with you, just to share some things that's going to go on. And uh, it's a letter, and I'm just going to read it, and I'm going to kind of expound upon it as I read it to you. It's a letter from me, and it says, To the members and guests of Fellowship Baptist Church, Our leadership has met and discussed the process of being uh, beginning our worship service again physically. We have monitored the overall situation and also evaluated our specific situation. While there's excitement and anticipation uh, of opening back up, we wanted to share some information on how our worship services will be conducted. Rest assured that all areas have been cleaned and disinfected. In fact, uh, this was done at the beginning, and we're going to have it cleaned before the next service comes up. We wanted everything to be clean before people enter to the building. So just to give you a word of encouragement, uh, we will have the sanctuary clean. Uh, that will be the area that we're going to have worship. So we'll have everything clean and ready to go when we have our church service. Uh, we are going, and this, this is the dates, we're going to begin by having an 11 a.m. service this Sunday, May 31st. So at 11 a.m. this Sunday, we're going to have just a worship service. And I just want to make sure that you understand that. We will also begin having Wednesday night services beginning Wednesday, June the 3rd at 6 p.m. For those not comfortable about coming, if you feel like there's still a fear of, uh, of something and you're still not ready or your health is not good enough for you to come, we're still going to have the morning services available online and on DVD. So if you know somebody needs a copy or if you need uh, to see that and you're not comfortable quite yet coming into our church building, we're going to still have the online and DVD services available uh, for that. So we're not going to just quit doing that. We're going to actually continue doing online services, uh, the preaching service uh, online continually, and we'll continue to do the DVDs as well. Now the worship service... Uh, just to talk about the worship service a little bit, it's going to work, look a little bit different just for a couple weeks. Uh, hopefully we can begin to lift a couple of these things. Here's a few things that I wanted to share with you. We're planning on doing a touchless service. And what does it mean by touchless service? Basically when you come to church and you come into the sanctuary, uh, you won't have to touch anything. You won't have to open a door. Uh, doors will be open for you. You don't have to worry about grabbing a Bible or a, uh, a song book out of the pew because we're going to have everything available for you to not have to touch anything in, in the building. Even though we've sanitized anything, it's just a matter of spreading uh, things as well. So we're planning a touchless service 
This is uh, when we come into minimal or no contact with the doors, the pews, the books, etc. Now when you enter into the parking lot, uh, you're going to head towards the newer part, the new sanctuary, the new sanctuary over there. Uh, this is going to be the only method of entry and exit. We're going to have all the other doors locked, uh, at least for this first week. Uh, so we'll have those doors locked, but we'll have the sanctuary open. And uh, we'll have door greeters that will be at the door, so you don't have to come in contact with the door. The door will be open for you, so you don't have to touch the door. Uh, hand sanitizer will be available when you come in. All of our announcements will be posted on the wall. We won't have bulletins for about two weeks. We're just uh, being some precautionary about that. Uh, we will be recommending social distancing. Uh, just use whatever common sense that you uh, can use uh, as we uh, gather. And uh, I believe if we just come and we worship the Lord and we, we come with the, the common sense that we have, I think it, it'll work just fine. Uh, there'll be no children's church or nursery. Uh, just keep that in mind as you that have little ones. Uh, it'll be more of a family-oriented service, so you'll be with your families during that time. All music and Bible verses will be on the wall, so uh, just remember that. <clears throat> now, as far as the offering, offering plates will not be passed during the service. Um, they'll be placed in the back, in the foyer area. You say the back. It's the foyer area, and as you leave, you can drop your offering into the offering plates as you leave. So there will be no passing of the plates. Now as time goes by, we're going to revert back to our normal processes and parts of services. We're going to extend our services. We'll start having our Sunday nights pretty soon, uh, our regular Wednesday night services and different things like that. And we'll start having our fellowships again as time goes by and everything continues to go on decline with this virus. Now, a personal note from me, uh, I prayed for the day when the Lord will bring us back together. We are excited for this opportunity, but also we need to be mindful. If you feel sick, or if your health may be in question about coming, please stay at home. Like I said, we can use some common sense, I believe. If we feel like we're sick, I don't think it's a good idea uh, to go out. Uh, and remember, while we're here worshiping, we can use some common sense as well. We have every available resource for you and everything uh, ready when you re you can return back to church. So if you're not able to come, we do have methods of getting you information. So uh, don't don't fret about that. We will we'll help you any way that we can. Now, I'm eager to see all of you. There are some of you that I have seen, but there's many of you that I haven't seen in a while. And uh, I hope the Lord blesses you through all that has transpired over the past few months. And I wanted to close with a, uh, a passage of scripture that Paul wrote to the Romans. And this is what it says. It says, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with the Spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make a mention of you always in my prayers, making requests that by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. To the end ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. And that's from Romans 1, 8 through 11. So we're excited about what's going on. Uh, we will have our first service this Sunday at 11 a.m. I hope you can come and be a part of it as we worship together. And I'm praying for each one of you and pray that the Lord's will be done. And I'm praying that the Lord will just lift you up during this time and uh, continue to lift each other up in prayer. I thank each and every one of you for tuning in tonight. And I pray that God blesses you and hope you have a great rest of the week. And hopefully we'll see you on Sunday. Let me close you in a word of prayer. Father, I just want to come to you in prayer and thank you for this time that we can get into your word, Lord, and talk about the things that's going on in our church. And Lord, I pray that you're just uh, lifted up and glorified, Lord, in everything that we do. And Lord, continue to be as we get prepared for our first Sunday back. Lord, I pray that you would just uh, be in every part of it and that your Holy Spirit would go ahead of us. And Lord, that you would be glorified through it. Lord, just be with us now and be with us throughout the rest of this week. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you and have a great rest of the week.